In the year of our Lord, 1521, Martin Luther was summoned to appear before a conference in the German city of Worms. He was ordered to renounce his Protestant views. And Luther's words are recorded for history, and he said, Unless I am convinced by the testimony of Scripture, or by clear reason, I am bound by the Scriptures I have quoted, and my conscience is captive to the Word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything, since it is neither safe nor right to go against conscience. May God help me. As Luther departed the conference heading home to Wittenberg, he was attacked on the road. He was abducted. He was taken away to the castle at Wartburg. And he remained there in isolation for nearly a whole year. No one knew where he was being held. People in the castle didn't call him Martin Luther, they called him Junker Jurg. What had happened, people were saying all the way through Germany, to Martin Luther, that great reformer. In reality, the abduction was staged. Frederick III, who was Luther's patron, he feared, understandably, for Luther's um, safety and had arranged for him to, be, to disappear. After his appearance in Worms, Luther was condemned by the Catholic Council as an obstinate heretic. Reading or even owning any of his writings was banned. So how did Luther spend his time during this period? Well, he engaged in some private correspondence with key figures of the day. And he embarked upon the translation of the New Testament into contemporary German, so that the common people could read the Word of God for themselves. Had Luther not been sequestered for this period of time, it is questionable whether he would ever have found a time for such a significant undertaking. This reminds me of another individual who found his freedom of movement curtailed. In AD 56, Paul of Tarsus wrote to the believers in Rome saying that he planned to visit them, the capital city of the empire, on his way to Spain. First, however, he needed to visit Jerusalem. If you are familiar with the book of Acts, you will know that there Paul was arrested on essentially trumped up charges. He was thrown in jail and he remained in prison for two years under the governorship of Felix and then of Festus. No more preaching, no more healing the sick, no more planting churches. Eventually, Paul was sent to Rome for trial before the emperor. But Acts chapter 28 records that he spent a further two years under house arrest. People could come to see him, but he couldn't go out to see them. So how did Paul spend his time? Well, in Philippians chapter 1 verse 12 to 14, we learn that Paul was active in sharing his faith with those people who guarded him. Let me read to you. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and they dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Talk about having a captive audience. While we don't want to come across as holier than now, this present crisis does afford us opportunities to talk about our Christian faith. How can a loving God allow such disaster to fall upon the world? It is a good question and there are answers. Why 
are we so confident that death is not the final curtain? What is it about the Bible that brings us such comfort at this time? So Paul talked to people around him, but he did more than just talk. Like Luther, he put pen to paper, or possibly parchment, I suppose. He wrote letters to far-off churches. And whereas Martin Luther translated the Bible, some of Paul's letters have come to be included in our Bibles today. Books like Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians and Philemon. Paul may have preached fewer sermons because of this time, but his letters have provided massive encouragement to believers down through the centuries. Some of you who are listening to this talk right now are self-isolating because of coronavirus. Others of us are free to go out to work, but we are still restricting our movements for the sake of others within society. And the question I would like to pose to you is this, how will we spend this unexpected time? Are there people to whom you could be reaching out? Are there letters or emails you could write? Is there a particular book you've been planning on reading but not getting around to it? Is there some project that could occupy your time? One that perhaps in the fullness of time could become a significant blessing to other people. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5, another of Paul's prison letters, he charges his readers to make the most of every opportunity. Why don't we pause right now and just pray about that? Let's pray. Dear God, none of us expected this time. And yet I pray that it would not be time wasted, but time that is gained, where we can do those things that perhaps were unexpected, but we can be a blessing to many people around. And help us, Lord, to keep a view that's outwards as well as upwards. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for listening. Tune in again tomorrow.